So I want to help people distinguish something that I think is nuanced between what you're saying and something arguably more problematic that mm. a lot of people say when they're kind of attacking standard pro-life people's character. Yeah. So yeah. there's this like common thing, you know, that you'll get of like, well, how many kids have you adopted yeah. or even what are you doing to help the environment? What are you mm. doing for animal cruelty? There'll be like kind of all these like yeah. questions. It's kind of like, unless you are quote unquote pro-life yeah. on these areas, I don't want to hear what you have to say about abortion. Yeah. And, and it becomes this kind of like this easy way to be like, Oh, I don't have to listen to you because yeah. I disagree with you about, you know, like 10 other issues yes. or, and it could just be, we only disagree on one of those, but Hey, I've been able to sufficiently disqualify mm. you from being an opinion that I need to listen yeah. to. And it's usually going to be a lot of like other kinds of social issues. Yeah. Now, so it's going to like try to like put some cards on the table and then I, and then I just kind of want to like get your reaction. Cool. I think there is a version of that that is kind of legit and a version of it that is not. I don't mm -hmm. think that people ought to do the, okay, well you have to agree with me about 10 other things or else I'm not, I'm not going to listen yeah. to you about abortion. Mm -hmm. I don't think either side should be doing that. Agreed. Yeah. However, I do think that pro-life people often come across as if they have fetus tunnel vision hmm. where it seems like yeah. they only care about abortion yeah, and they yeah. don't care about any other issue. Yeah. Doesn't mean they actually don't care about any other issue, but at least it comes across like they don't care about any other issue because they yeah. only talk about the one thing. What I don't currently think pro-lifers are needing to do is split up all their time on all the issues. Yeah. Right. I like I yeah. can think human trafficking is evil. Right. But also not really I'm not really doing anything yeah, about it. Yeah. I am focusing most of my efforts on abortion mm -hmm. and some other people are focusing most of their efforts on human trafficking. And some people are focusing most of their efforts on, on a homeless ministry. Yeah. And I think that's okay. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, you know, you're just going to be really passionate about one thing. Are you going to be really skilled at a thing? Like not everyone is set up to be cell counselors. Not everyone is skilled at exactly. being fundraisers, like yeah. there's all kinds of different areas where you can serve, mm -hmm. but we should still care about other things. Right. right. It would be like weird <laughs> for me to be like, I hate abortion, but I don't at all hate that human trafficking's a thing mm -hmm. and not be interested in at least learning about it and understanding like what that means, what that is. So I can, I can at least empathize and yeah. maybe sometimes get involved. Okay. So there's like, that's a distinction that even a lot of people aren't making. I want you to translate this because I think a lot of people would hear when you're talking about the stressors yes. going on for black people. And we talked about yeah. this a lot yesterday too. Mm -hmm. They would hear you saying, oh, you don't get to do pro-life stuff unless you are super involved in all of these other kinds, kinds of, of activism or yeah. politics or something. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what you mean. Right. I think you mean something else. And so yeah. I want you to uh, uh, really explain yeah. about the, the stressors and what pro-life people need to understand if they mm. want to really help black people in their ministry yeah. or even at a bigger level, this is a lot of times <laughs> like for like pro-life leaders they are like, how do we get more black people involved in the pro-life yeah. movement? Right. Yeah. That conversation happens yeah. a lot. Like we want to diversify the movement. How do we do that? Yeah. And you're like, you got to understand there's some other stuff sometimes going on for us. Yeah. That is logically prior yeah. to us being able to like jump into, I'm going to go and be part of your pro-life outreach. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So what you said about there's things you got to check off or things you got to care about. That's on both sides mm. in order to get to my argument and get to be in my tribe, be in mm. my club. Right. Mm. That's where for me, I want to, I say, blow all that up. Like, Screw all of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I hate that. Yeah. Because that doesn't leave space for me to build a relationship with you. It only leaves space for me to agree with you. Yeah. And if I don't agree with you, guess what you get to do with me? Right. Throw me away. You're only going to have a relationship with people who are exactly like you. Yeah. Like, that. that's it. Which is very boring. And it's super boring. Yeah. Like, it makes life boring. Yeah. Like, this sucks. And you're never going like, to change your mind about anything. You're not going to get <laughs> empathy for people who are yeah. different than you ever. Like, you, like you, you don't have this opportunity to ever at any point point in time and in space change your mind yeah yeah people are scared of that yeah like i can't change my mind on anything oh, yeah. i can't meet anybody and build a relationship with somebody who actually 
keys me in on something that I'm like, huh, let me go home and pray on this. Let me go home and look. Nobody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what irks me because mm -hmm. I feel like we should. Yep. And that's where we continually miss, yep. especially in the pro-life aspect of things. It's like, if you don't, again, if you don't check these boxes as a, to be specific as a black man, then yep. how can you, you know, how can you really be pro-life? Right. And it's like, well, well, bump that. I don't, I don't want to have to check your boxes off in right. order to say that I'm pro-life. I'm going to go be right. pro-life. You know right. what I'm saying? So I think that kind of works its way into spaces we just aren't comfortable in, which are relationship building, um, actually sitting down and hearing about these stressors that I keep talking about. Because I heard at this banquet one time, the speaker say, you know, like two black people, that abortion is the biggest atrocity ever for your people. Wow. And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> you're basing that off of numbers, mm -hmm. right? But the relationship aspect of the black plight in America has spoken to a lot of different things in terms of chattel slavery and uh -huh. uh, Jim Crow and redlining and all the subtle things that you just tend to forget about, mm -hmm. right? That now, guess what, are stressors. Yeah. And those stressors feed into an abortion decision. So this is my stance, right? So again, you want to make abortion unthinkable, deal with the stressors. Because now you put me in a place where I can actually live and I can mm. thrive. Mm. And I'm not just trying to survive, right? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not seeing my area get gentrified and I don't have a space and a place to actually lay my head mm -hmm. in this place that you're now building up and bringing in all the fun stuff, all the Trader Joe's and all the different places. And now the property level goes up. I can't afford to live here. Why is that? Maybe it's because of the job situation. Why is the job situation? Like start connecting those dots mm -hmm. And now you get back to an abortion decision, right? Yeah. So that's that's a big thing for me. Like, oh gosh, like you 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 had an abortion? Oh yeah, you're going to hell. You know, you're just this horrible person. And oh gosh, how could you do this atrocity? Well, if you listen to my story and you build a relationship with me and you see the plight that I've had to live, yeah. now I'm sitting in your pregnancy center saying that oh I can't do this. I got to abort. Well, why? And deal with my why. Like that was a that's a big thing for me. Yeah. Like if it's employment, deal with it. If it's housing, let's deal with it. But what my white brothers and sisters, here's my uh, mm -hmm. if you have the influence in those areas, and we kind of talked about like certain things that I'm trying to do with that too. If you have influence in those areas mm -hmm. that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. That's how you that's how you get things done. Yeah. Like if you have housing influence mm -hmm. in the area mm -hmm. and you see what's happening and I'm able to bring to the table what I see as well. Mm -hmm. That's the part about like blow up the check boxes right. and just come to the table. Right. These are real things that people are dealing with in this in this community, black community about this thing. What I know for a fact is those things build up to now if she gets pregnant. She's thinking about all this stuff first. Yeah. He's thinking about all this stuff first. And now he's in the, he's in the decision of influencing her. Like, girl, you know what we deal with? You know, we can't do this. Okay. Is that the same plight normally for a lot of white families? I don't think so. And this is just from my experience yeah. of having white families that I've dealt with and have been in the coaching room. And it's more of an embarrassment thing or whatever. It's not necessarily just being able to take care of a child. You know, there's 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 availability to have access to money and all those things that a black family just doesn't. Yeah. So use your influence. Attorney, uh, you know, real estate guy, mm -hmm. um, all these different areas, use your influence because you see these gaps. Don't just tell me to work hard. Don't know want that. If you're still in that space, it's like, all right. Okay, I, I don't know if we can, we can, you know, like w what our main goal is going to be coming out of this conversation. I still want to love, love you. Still want to walk with you, and I pray over time that yeah. you, you know, see certain things and God breaks your heart for certain things, and that's cool. I can't do that. Right. You know, I take that pressure off of me. I can't be your savior. So, right. you know, it's like no, nah, but I want to continually put stuff in front of you to say, like, yeah. deal with these things. You know what I mean? And yeah. now this abortion conversation changes. It's different now. 
It just is going to be. It has to be because I don't have those things to worry about in a sense or worry about as much. What would you say to the pro-life conservatives who are like, yeah, but look, abortion is actually killing human beings. It is right. clearly to the like worse. Like, yeah, it like I shouldn't have to go and, you know, work on affordable housing and all these other things in right. order to just say, like, it's wrong to kill babies. Like, yeah. why can't I just say it's wrong to kill babies? Agree or yeah. disagree. Yeah. Um. Like, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so like they so, almost they might feel like they're trying to get them to be like more of a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you sound kind of yeah. like one sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, clarify. Yeah, yeah. So black people as a majority don't have that luxury that you're talking from, hmm. right? The luxury that you get to talk from is not necessarily the majority luxury of the black family or the black person in America. So. Hmm. Well, just you just you're just killing people. Like you can't you gotta stop this murderous act. Ask me why. Mm. Ask me why I have to make this decision, mm -hmm. right? On a higher plight than you do. Yeah. Even though I'm twelve to thirteen percent of the population, but I have thirty six, thirty whatever right. numbers are right. of the abortions. Why? Is right. it literally just because I'm that evil? Right. Am I really just that evil of a person? Or is there something else <laughs> going on here? Maybe. Maybe. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, like, like, think for a minute, man. Like, yeah. hear me out. You yeah. know, and and that's what I'm, that's my plea to my pro-life friends, mm. my white brothers and sisters, like, s just stop for a minute, man. Like, yeah. you know, everything is so, like, when we're raising all these this money, we're doing all these things, we're having all these big marches and movements, but man, when statistics stay statistics, mm -hmm. then the arguments have to stay the same. But when statistics turn into people and you see the statistic, that should drive you to people. Now you want to do something about the people. Yeah. Right. So it's like I see the statistics of black abortion rates in the black African-American community. Mm -hmm. That drives me to go do something with my people. Right. Because I want to see the stat come down. Right. But I know the only way the stat comes down is if I deal with what the stat is about. You're going towards root causes. Yes. But I feel like that's what we should be doing. Right. As pro-lifers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, we're just not. We're not doing a good job of that, to be honest. And it's like, oh, please, please, my white brothers and sisters, understand, please. Yeah. Black people aren't inherently evil and just killing their babies. I promise you they're not. not there's stressors on. and there's things going on that if you stop for a minute, there's enough money. We've been raising money for a long time. Stop for a minute and just hear me. Mm -hmm. Please he hear the story of why she feels so uncomfortable having this child. Yeah. Because her boyfriend is broke. He can't find a job. He has a felony. Whatever. Yeah. My family... There's already eight people in my house. We're living in Section 8 housing. Mm. Now here comes a builder that's then bought it, and they want to make it into a nicer place for affordable housing. But now you do that, you come back, the rent is three times what it was. Mm. You can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I try to go get another job to help. So now I work two <laughs> 12-hour jobs. Mm -hmm. So I literally work 24 hours a day. My kids are home. You see what I'm saying? Like, yep. follow this train with me. domino effect that happens. So now, when it gets to this abortion decision, it's hard. Yeah. It's a very hard place. Yeah. And especially in my specific line of working with the men, is I want him to be an influence to help her yeah. to be able to make this decision so that she's not sitting on a cold table in a doctor's room making one of the biggest decisions in her life, and you get to sit in the car. Mm -hmm. Like, no. But I want you, guy, to understand your influence in this from a place of stability. Yeah. So if employment can be helped, if transportation can be a help, yeah. let's, let's work on that. And that's where I say with all this money we're raising and all this stuff we're doing, my white friends, <laughs> stop for a minute and see how those things can help in these different communities. And now let's look at, let's come back in two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 years and now let's look at the statistics. Yeah. But that gets into the cultural part, which breaks us away from pro-life and pro-choice. Yeah. 
And now it just gets into the weeds of our lives and into the weeds of constructs, institutions, systems. And now we start dealing with some stuff. And now you see why in a black mind, abortion starts coming down the ranks because there are so many things that are happening. But with black people, even in that realm, in the pro-life realm that pushed abortion to the top, you get penalized by a black community to say, oh, you're just Uncle Tom in it so that you can go make money so that you can have position, that you can have the power that they have. Yeah. But you're forgetting about us, yeah. all of us in this situation. So yeah. it, it works on both ends in a, in a certain kind of yeah. way. But I think that's that's near and dear to my heart, man. Like there, There's mm. a uh, an interesting thing that that came up yesterday. So I keep on referring to yesterday. So, so you, me. Yeah. Greg Austin and, and mm -hmm. Maurice from Karenet, we all got together with Justin and Josh from Love, Love Life. Life. Just yep. like the, the Great these four organizations yeah. can kind of just hear each other, learn more about yeah, what each other's man. doing, that was beautiful. I love explore it. ways to to potentially partner in the future. Like yep. this is like the kind of thing that the pro-life movement should be doing more. Yes. Is a thing that yes. we spent all day doing <laughs> yesterday. Literally all day. And it was and, and it was good. It was beautiful, man. And you said something that was super interesting to me that I just think underlines how hard it is sometimes for black people to hear from white conservatives that they mm. see as maybe coming from a place that is going to be harder for them yeah. where like it's, I think it's pretty obvious. I don't know. Maybe it's not obvious everywhere, but it's, it's kind of obvious that the white person coming in and telling black people about <laughs> how they ought to live and things like yeah. that. It's pretty, it's pretty cringy. Yeah. But he, you said he, even you as a black pro-lifer going into the black church yes. to do pro-life stuff, you're even getting a lot of the, like the distancing yeah. stuff yes. because you're seen as being like part of this white thing. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So just to lay out the basis why, of where I think why, and then I work yeah. kind of through, but I, I feel like, it all goes back to the tag, to the phrase pro-life and hmm. all that's entangled in that phrase and in that term, baggage there. tons of baggage, right? So me saying that I'm a pro-lifer being a big black guy, how in the world from, from black community, black church, bro, do you know what they're about? Ho, 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 ho. Let's investigate first, hmm. right? <laughs> before you just write me off, sir, black pastor, uh -huh. you know, like what does the term pro-life mean? What has it meant? Mm -hmm. And we can talk through that, debate that, whatever. And what do you, what do you think it means to me? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, when I've been in black churches, pro-life means conservative craziness, Trumpish yeah. actions, you're a part of it, black man. Yeah. You're an Oreo. You're all these things. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's stop right there, sir. Cause you don't know me. Yeah. All right. But at the same time, it's like, I hear you. I, I, I understand the fillers, all that kind of stuff, but who am I? Who, who, who are you? Like, do, do, so do you care about, you know, uh, do you care about the abortion aspect of things? Like, you know, I just start asking, okay, I, I, I take that. Right. But, but why? Like, you know, the, these are the things that now Major League Dad is doing. Yeah. These are things you care about as well, right? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what you're... Okay, well, what I'm saying is that all matters about the abortion decision. Mm. And now they're like, oh, crap. You know, it's like, I've seen it. So, so you're so, having to explain to them in kind of a different way. Yeah, a di you're, yeah. you're going a different route yeah. to show them why abortion maybe ought to matter more yeah. to them. That is going to be very culturally specific and relevant yes. to them. That's really which Which comes home to, to way back at the beginning of our conversation of this protected black church, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't want you coming in here spewing this, you know, this Republican foolishness in my church <laughs> <laughs> to my people that I have, a, that I'm protecting. Right. right. That, that I'm protecting because when they leave my church, they're dealing with paying their light bill, you know, police brutality. Like, that's the stuff that we got to worry about. We got to worry about how to live. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they're not going out here. Like, I had one pastor tell me, it was like, well, the girls in my church and the guys in my church ain't going out here just making babies. Like, that, that's, not, that's not what I see. Yeah. What I see is light bills, gas bills, yeah. you know, underemployment, um, yeah. 
issues with schooling with, with my young boy. Like, so when I say, you know what, I care about those same things just as much as you do. Yeah. Right. And what I feel like it leads to is the decision of an abortion. Yeah. And now the, the fact that I framed it that way, it turns now what probably was an enemy when I first walked in to hopefully a friendly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think I have that luxury of being a black man. Yeah. I can talk black language in terms of church because I grew yeah. up in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I know the 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 I know the lingo. I and know how to you say. care about these other same things that they also care about. Exactly. It's not like you only have fetus tunnel vision. You also care exactly. about those things. Yes. yes. You're yes. doing what I have to do with liberal college yes. pro choice atheists. Yes. Where it's like, look, like so like I agree. Here's yeah. an area where like we're kind of different when it comes to pro-life apologetics. There would be like there are pro-life apologists that would say that when you get the accusations like yeah. how many kids have you adopted, that the response should basically functionally be who cares how many kids have adopted <laughs> because that doesn't prove that my argument's wrong. Yeah. Which is logically and philosophically true. Yeah. But unfortunately, young people at this point, a lot of them, if your answer is simply that's a logical fallacy. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just, they're not going to be able to hear you anymore. Exactly. Like, like there's a yeah, certain, yeah. like sometimes you kind of have to, in their eyes, earn the right to be heard. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and is that fair? Is it logically exactly right? No, <laughs> no but no. it's also true. It's yeah. also, it is what it is. And so yeah. I am very intentionally dropping all these common ground things. Yes. If I'm talking with a liberal person, okay, what things do I have common ground with them on? Like a genuine common ground. I am, I'm not even waiting for them to ask me, me, what do I think about animal <laughs> cruelty or these yeah. other things? I don't really yeah. want to get into right now, but it's like, I am finding ways to get into that yeah. because then they're saying, Oh, he's not just, you know, January 6th insurrectionist <laughs> guy with a MAGA hat. Yeah. He's something different. He's more, yeah. there's more angles to him, yeah. uh, more facets to him. And then they're more intrigued by what I have to say. I've kind of, yeah. I'm earning the right to be heard. You're having to do the same thing by same thing, exact same thing. Yeah. And that's so why I feel like it's so crazy. That's why I feel like we're so similar yeah. in terms of our circles. Yeah. But what I would love to see more in terms of um, what I'm talking about, even with, I mentioned earlier, like even at the conference, Canada coverage before and we yeah. were at and I did the little segment on yeah. you know how to reach the black church and yeah. it's like well breathe calm down you know because you're 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 not the answer to the black church so yeah. so don't don't think that way right but just come in and say hey these are things that we want to help here's what yeah. we want to do how can we help and be a part right yeah. so take that aim as a as a whole pro life movement mm -hmm. right so all the high level speakers and people is like, you know, come down a notch yeah. uh, or a couple notches and think through this in terms of how this now goes into a community that is, you know, despairingly hit by abortion much, much more. Yeah. But here's why. And it's like, deal with that yeah. in a big movement way. And I feel like now actually you start opening up relationship opportunities you start opening up the doors in the churches yeah. for cultural relationship opportunity all that kind yeah. of stuff opens up so that's my prayer yeah. you know what i'm saying that's like my big grandiose prayer for the pro-life movement yeah. it's like if you come down to this level of thinking um because what i'm saying is not sexy you know what i'm saying it's like oh well i don't want to do that that doesn't create buzz that doesn't create yeah. you know political buzz and all that kind of stuff well yeah okay whatever so yeah. Do you actually want to get it done or not? Right. You know, if you're okay with continuing in the same vein, all right. I mean, that's all that's going to really happen. A lot of change won't. A lot of, you know, the, the abortion aspect of things won't really change. You'll keep making loads of money. <laughs> You'll keep doing all the things. And it's like nothing really happens to the people. Yeah. Right. So these people that are, dealing with stuff on a daily basis that are in the black and brown community that have these different stressors. Yeah. If you can take all of your knowledge and influence pro-life movement yeah. and actually be what pro-life should mean, yeah. just calm down, take a minute, start the process, crock pot that thing. It's going to take a while because of how it's been built. Yeah. It would take a long time, even longer to try to like, Oh gosh, what is he talking about? Like we got to actually, like, how do we do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't know. That's just 
All right, final question before I, we're definitely doing a part two because there's like yeah. a whole other thing I want to get into that we don't have time to get into. But but yeah. this is kind of on this topic. This is going to be a controversial question, but Uh-oh. I just I just feel like I, I I'd rather talk to you about it than anyone else on this podcast. Mm. In that vein of what would you like white conservatives to understand better? Yeah, just to help them be mm-hmm. more fully you know, knowledgeable, less ignorant, understanding, loving, all of that. Yeah. What should white people, white conservatives take from Black Lives Matter and what should they not? What are the Mm. things that you basically think are like helpful? Yeah. And what are like, do you think think it's all great? It's all gold. Are there things that you disagree with that sometimes Mm -hmm. comes out of Black Lives Matter type, you know, activists or speakers or whatever? Yeah. How do we separate the wheat and the chaff from yeah. that? Dun, dun, dun. I know. He asked that. <laughs> yeah, no, like, he what didn't. Are you doing? Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, who we? All right. Because that's like, Black Lives Matter is also almost a curse word it is, for a lot of conservatives. It's, it's the new F-bomb. It's like, you know, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. and, and anytime anyone brings up something from January 6th, okay, well, all we got to do is do a what about us and thing about Black Lives uh, Matter no. rallies that got violent or whatever. And so... Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's almost, it's like the new Marxism. It's the new, you know, it's almost a new Planned Parenthood for a lot of conservatives. Yeah. It's like, yeah. they're yeah, yeah, like, just yeah. like this really, really evil thing. Yeah. Yeah. What say you? What do you think? Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> really? So this is, this is not that long for me because I feel like for one, it's not that hard mm. <laughs> um, because there are things that, let me just go and get this out the way that I do disagree with. Yeah in terms of um, stuff that you can just go on their website and read. Yeah. Like, there's some things, because I feel like it's an attack on family. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes father out of the picture, stuff like that. So, yeah. yes, there are things that I do disagree with. Yeah. But here's my thought on Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Black Lives Matter is what the church should have been mm. in the time frame of what was happening. The church so what, should have been talking as passionately against what happened to George Floyd yes. as people were at Black Lives Matter rallies. That we Black heard. Lives Matter filled a gap uh-huh. that I feel like if the church was already in the gap, yeah. wouldn't have been such a big thing. Black Lives Matter wouldn't have had to be such a big thing for a black life in mm. this country because churches should have an effect in culture in some kind of way. Right. But I feel like with all the racial reconciliation stuff that we're doing, which I don't even agree with the word reconciliation, but that's another whole topic. What does that even mean? Oh, yeah, no, sorry. I did just drop that bomb and move on. My bad. Real um, quick. Re- reconcile to what? Isn't that like definition-wise? Mm-hmm. To reconcile is to go to reconcile back to like we're rec- Jesus came, died on the cross, you know, resurrected. Now we have the power to reconcile. So you're saying we should ultimately be reconciled to him. Reconciled to him. Right. So we want the in race stuff in America. What do we really want to reconcile to when we look at the history of the church? Hmm. Right. And I and I say that because I read a great book, Jamar Tisby, controversial guy. Um, the color of compromise, that book, reading through it and the history of the church. And I'm like, do we, what are we reconciling the church to? Like, I, I couldn't understand it. So racial reconciliation. Yeah. So that's what I mean by that. I yeah. just, I, I, I'm still working through that. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to drop that bomb and be like, ah, yeah, okay. I just have an issue with it because I'm trying to work through it. Like, what yeah. are we really reconciling the church? No, that's an interesting question. Yeah. So that, that's neither here nor there. Back to black, that's right. Yeah. So I feel like, for me, that's where I feel like the church had a golden opportunity to be in that gap of yeah. talking about yeah. what needed to happen. If we're going to talk, be big and bad about how we want to see churches, you know, the, the the blacks and whites come together and all these things. And we saw this obvious event happen and boom, silence. And then Black Lives Matter comes and says Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And for all the reasons that are wrong with certain things that I think philosophically or whatever the word would be that they believe, Mm -hmm. I think they feel the gap that black people had something to attach to. And it's like, because there wasn't enough of an outcry for white people. Yes and no. And I, and I, and I say that scarcely (laughs) because I think there was not enough cry from black and white church. That's Mm. just me. Really? Um, Yeah. Like, I feel like, 
it took Black Lives Matter for the church to attach to something. Black church. The black church. Right. So, yeah. but no, you have the influence. You have the power. Go ahead and speak out. You you make the declaration. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You make the declaration for life and what that means in that situation and what happened and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to wait to attach to something else. Right? Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's even more complicated though, right? Because yeah. even if white churches in mass had made a bigger deal about what happened to George Floyd yeah. when he was murdered. Even if, the, yeah. like, that Sunday, yeah, yeah. Oh, even man. if they had had, like, an hour of <sighs> wailing. Lamenting and, and all lamenting that. Lamenting for what yeah. we've done. You know, we've gotten really away from the idea of corporate repentance, you yeah. know, yeah, 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 in, yeah. In, in modern times. And mm-hmm. a lot of people are even uncomfortable with the idea of, like, hey, I didn't have any slaves, so I don't really have anything to exactly. be repentant of. So there's, like, there's, there's a lot of cultural gaps and things happening. <laughs> Yeah. Or just different ways of thinking happening. But it's like, it was it wouldn't have been enough just for the black church, it seems, to lament true, to that even true. more. Because yeah. where are the police chiefs going to church? church. They're <laughs> not going to church at the black church, generally exactly. speaking. Exactly, yeah. But if the white church had the influence to be like, look, we're not just going to like really wrestle with this, yeah. you know, corporately, emotionally on Sunday morning, but like, we're yeah. meeting with the police. Like, what what needs to change in our city? It, you know, if, if if they had done those things, I wonder. Yeah. I'm asking. No, if, no, no. If yeah. they had done those things, yeah. And then, of course, the black church would have had to find out that they did those things because we're yeah, not talking. talking right. <laughs> so there would have had to be like ways of getting together, not just on Sunday morning, but like where we're like the maybe the pastors are all connecting or talk or or maybe doing events mm-hmm. or bring where we're coming together. Do you think if something like that had happened? Yeah. Then maybe that would have filled the gap because it seems yeah, like yeah, that yeah. would have been a necessary condition because it wasn't just going to be enough for the white church to, to have like a Sunday where we're all sad about George Floyd. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Like what? Because yeah. you're going to be like, hey, what's happening though? What's yeah, changing? What are exactly. you doing? What are you doing? Yes, that and that's the key. So even to go back to what I was saying about to kind of clean up a little bit more about black church because yeah. that is what was happening. I would assume, and what I saw just in my area of Raleigh, yeah, when George Floyd happened, and black church is like, this is a this is an atrocity. Yeah. You know, actually lamenting about this, mm-hmm. that happening. And I feel like almost sometimes to even think about is the black church so drowned out sometimes because of the power of the white church mm. um, in terms of influence, whether it's political, whether it's media, all this type of stuff. Um, if that if if that effort was almost drowned out, almost mm-hmm. in, in terms of like lamenting about what happened about George Floyd, so to to kind of clarify, it's like I'm not trying to say that black church was absent. No, it was a whole bunch of black churches that was like, yeah, no, this yeah. is this, he was murdered. This yeah. is crazy. We're gonna say something, yeah, and we're going to go out here and we're gonna actually be a part of something. And right? Here's where a rally is gonna right. be, and we're gonna go exactly. Yeah, and I think something you said was key is. If the black church is doing this and the white church is doing this, we have a bigger aspect of something culturally going on that now if Black Lives Matter isn't necessarily needed, it could still have been started or whatever. But the the press yeah. to towards, you know, whatever it needs to happen is already happening. And I feel like the more I think through, you know, especially the power of the white church in America. Yeah if the white church was communicating with the black church yeah. and saying, Hey, this is a murder. Yeah. But then you have to deal with, there was a lot of white churches that don't feel like it was a murder. Yeah. So you got to deal with that. Cause yeah. I heard that too. Yeah. It is what it is. It hurts my heart. But yeah. for those who did, and for those who they wanted to be like, man, they wanted to kind of like, uh, there's a meme of Homer Simpson who kind of like, uh, just fades into the bushes and like mm-hmm. kind of just gets out of the way. And now I'm going to just let the black church handle it. Yeah. It's like, no, you have the power. Like you, you have in, in all these political um, arenas, you know, legal arenas, all that kind of stuff. These police chiefs, these police officers, these yeah. lawyers and attorneys, they go to your Baptist church. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you speak out against this yeah. and say that, you know, you know, 846, this was a murder. Yeah. Man. Think about that power that's behind that. Yeah. And now Black Lives Matter is as as the movement it has become. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have had its same effect to me. This yeah. is just my personal thought yeah. about it. But um 
But you don't have the choice to pay attention to all the things that are wrong about Black Lives Matter. Right. Oh my gosh, they don't, they think this and they're all this. Okay, I get it. Yeah. But what they're actually getting at, I feel like the church missed a perfect opportunity yeah. to come together and to jump all over this and to say, this is how we need to change. Yeah. Something needs to happen. And black and white come together and make it happen yeah. from the church world. So, so, so let, let, just to, to take this one level deeper before I finally, I know we've been going for a long time. <laughs> we can do this for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. But just like, just a bit, I, I, don't, I don't want, before we tie a bow on this, mm -hmm. react to maybe something closer to what a legitimate concern would have been from a lot mm -hmm. of white churches, which was that I think a lot of times they were responding to what they saw as extremism from the other side, mm -hmm. where it was beyond just this case was a murder but mm -hmm. there were people that were like you know it's like the all cops are pigs yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah defund yeah. the police which some a lot of people didn't mean literally defund, defund. in all ways right the, there was something more nuanced sometimes meant but yeah, yeah it yeah. might not have been the most helpful <laughs> phrase for translating to us yeah um but they're hearing like oh we should have literally no police no, no <laughs> law enforcement at all and it's mm. like all cops are horrible, like this yeah. kind of thing. So there's a, then there's, it's just like, we're just divided. Yeah. So, you know, like a lot of white people are just kind of like, we're kind of like on the defending the cops side because a lot of them seem to be just doing their best and, yeah. and aren't, you know, racist, at least mm -hmm. some of them. And then, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> what do we do? How could we, how could we make that? Like, are, are there things where, okay, like the white church could have done this better. And is there things that you feel like that you would have liked to have seen happen differently among the black church during that time and the way that they were communicating about things? Yeah. And yeah. if so, what? Yeah. Yeah. It, and I'm not trying to make that a leading question from a white guy. No, 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 no. I, yeah, I, I get you because I feel like it, 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 it took, it took turns back into the we political. We both got further apart. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Further. But how could we have both come closer yeah. together? So, for one, not make it political. Yeah. Right? Not turn it into the political thing yeah. that it became. Right. And that's what happened. Which to me. would that would require have required different political leaders? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> right. This is true. Yeah, 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 also, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. Um, but I, I think it's like people were forced. Black church, white church. You were kind of forced to start thinking about this in a way that how does my tribe think yeah. about this? Now let's come together and have this discussion yeah. again, which is absent of relationship. Yeah. It's like you got your talking points ready. Now you're ready. It's like, okay, like let's go fight now. It's right. like, no, right. Like, let's just lament across yeah. the church yeah. board, white, black, age, whatever. Yeah. Let's just take time and be like, crap, this sucks. Yeah. Ah, and let's just pray and ask God to lead us together, right? Do that, and that creates this relationship aspect that I feel like is yeah. still absent within the church. Yeah. I'm just I, I, I harp on that because I feel like that's the biggest part of what Jesus showed us in His you know ministry was that it has to be the relationship. You can know all the things, you can yeah. be theologically astute as you want. Yeah. But if you're absent of a relationship, none of that stuff will actually matter because you don't have anything to use for. But anyway, so I, but I just think that and what you're saying is is tough because there's systems and there's agendas and there's things that are set up within the church mm -hmm. that you just can't rock it. You can't rock those boats. Right. And something that with the George Floyd thing, whew, that's going to rock some boats if we yeah. actually want to handle it and actually want to be a part of change, that's going to kind of mess up. Because for if, if white churches, even if a large white church is basically being mostly funded or you're half funded by like, let's say five mm. older white guys yeah. who are going to be really upset yeah. if you say things that sound too leftist or yes. too Democrat yes. or whatever. So they're going to take their checkbook and they're going to go up the street. That's a real thing. And that, that I'm, I'm, I, I'm being real. Like, that's what I know yeah. a lot of pastors are afraid of. And it's like, because now you have the livelihood of the church on your shoulders yeah. and you don't want to mess that up. So it's kind of like, that's the struggle, but it's like, Hey, oh, well, <laughs> because for me, when I go, you know, to my black brothers and sisters, black pastors, all that kind of stuff, it's like, they don't have that luxury. They could be scraping Sunday to Sunday. They don't have $4 million in the bank. Mm -hmm. 
and, you know, extra funds to just kind of pull from if something happened and all that. And my white pastor is worried about, you know, talking about truth and the old conservative white man taking his checkbook and leaving and going up the street. Yeah. Black people don't have that luxury. Sorry. Like, it's just not. And and I'm being specific in the church aspect of things. That luxury is not necessarily there. So you can't think mega churches, prosperity. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about the majority of just small churches that are in communities, right? They don't have that luxury. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, man, it's it's, it's a touchy thing, but I feel like relationships. Yep. It all comes back to relationships. Always. And it's, again, it's not sexy. It's Mm -hmm. hard work. Mm -hmm. It's dealing with people and slow cooking. Messy. Yeah, but man, when you think about all the stuff that gets thrown into that crock pot, at some point, it makes this beautiful meal. So, let's do it. Gary Freeman, I love you. Thanks so much for having this conversation that we had no idea where it was going to go. (laughs) I'll be forwarding all the hate mail right to you. (laughs) Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. And and we're going to come back and we're going to have a follow-up conversation on... How should pro-lifers think about Planned Parenthood and the whole racism thing? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to having that conversation with you for a long time. Most definitely, man. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it.